Hello, everyone at home. Hello, sky. Hello, flowers. Hello, bikini bottom. These gays, they're trying to murder me. What do I think of her? Yes. I don't think of her. That was a noise. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and so there's hair getting in my mouth now. Like, um, every day. you're in dog hell. Yes, a little bit. Well, oh, she's she's so cute, though. Look at her behind me. She's I know. The, I love couch. her. I'm not going to say. Oh. Well, she can't hear me if I say her name. No, she can't hear anything. Watch. Wait, Ginger. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, she oh. just perked up when I said Ginger. She kind of did. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. She learned her new name in like a day. I was kind of oh, shocked. That's good. Like, I think it sounds like Pepper. So like we love fun. Ginger. We do. We love Ginger. She's so cute. A little um, sweet, a little spicy. Have you gotten like a pet vac yet? Knowing you, you're like, we need to get like the pet vacuum attachment. <laughs> oh no, we already have the Dyson with like all the bits and bubbles. So I thought of you. The, uh-huh. I thought of you actually. Sorry not to cut you off. I thought of you when I was watching, um, whatchamacallit, How To With John Wilson. There was the episode <laughs> about the vacuum and they go in the vacuum repair store. Yes, and the guy's like, and the guy's like, fuck Dyson. Dyson yeah. Fuck Dyson. I was like, kind of queen for Oh, that. no. T, they're awful. Like, they are overpriced as hell. The one I bought they for like a redacted amount of money hell. is now like half the price. Um, but it comes, the one we got comes with a like car vac setting, which is perfect for the couch yeah. and a like long one that we can use to get the hair that piles up everywhere. Uh-huh. Okay, Originally, well, she she had, she had a lot of stress shedding, so now she's not as patchy, which is nice. So she's shedding a little less. Do I sound just as loud, by the way? A uh, friend of the show, Virgil, was in here recording Big Soy Naturals the other night, and I like had to turn it up for them because they always talk so quietly. <laughs> <laughs> no, you sound and I was like, why do I sound so loud right now? By the way, speaking of, um, of audio technicalities, we do have to issue a formal apology. <laughs> no, I'm not apologizing. I'm not apologizing because I was right. I was like right the whole time that I was not cutting you off. That's the well, thing. that's tea. I mean, you do be cutting me off, but in a respectful way that in doesn't sound way. as insane as the versions yeah. we released, where there was a sync audio issue by our current partner. Um, well, not like partner, but the service we pay for that's not delivering. Yeah, that we're we going to be changing out, off of soon. We're enough. getting out of. We're going to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. As soon as we get some money together, we're going to buy a new service. This <laughs> People is were like, like, "Joan's really talking for Matt." And we're like, "Well, sometimes she does that, but like, I also like it's not that." Bad. And then I listened. And I was like, "Oh, wait, the audio was like." So no, it was. Really it was. Up. It was like you were responding to. <laughs> things that i was saying in the future like like you were like coming in and it was like i would be about to say like ariana grande sold 20 million records and like six seconds before that you'd be like i love 20 million records and then like it's like wait what is happening right now oh my god yeah um so we're sorry here on eating for free the podcast recording live from the absolute edge of the internet i am for maybe one of the last times recent in future in the future uh ponytail scholar john summers <laughs> and i'm uh even slater apologist matthew lawson um oh. just kidding oh just well matt kidding. did matt did send me a photo of ethan slater the other day and was like wood and i was like you know what <laughs> wood, wood. <laughs> that's what i mean i'm like well kind of get it We'll get there. Kind of seem. We'll get there. That photo plays a part in today's episode. So. I can't believe we're actually here. Like, this legitimately all happened in the middle of July and we're in the middle of September. It has felt like 5,000 years since no, the news broke. Y'all, we literally, if like... We created a million hours of content. I can't <laughs> talk about it. I have been doing nothing but talking about Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater for two months. <laughs> Two fucking it's months. time it's time to wrap it up like it's time to wrap our it brain up. can't handle it anymore it's a little much and we love the support like i've said for this series and we are definitely planning our next one as we speak uh mm. miley cyrus's wrecking ball coming <gasps> later this year i'm so scared um, we also want to just say we had talked about maybe doing an episode about britney's divorce i'm thinking we might do a double divorce episode um next week and the week after next week i mean the week. book is coming out in like Two yeah, weeks? I think Not we're going to try to time Britney's to the book. So we're going to push that back a little. And instead, next week, we're going to do Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas because people have been begging <sighs> us. <laughs> Um, and I think we issued this correction, not correction, sorry, not correction. We issued this announcement already on Patreon. But for those of you who, for some reason, don't sign up for Patreon, which you should because you get so much shit on Patreon. Love you guys. We love our patrons. Um, mm-hmm. We, uh, what was it also that we talked about? Oh, yeah. We're not going to be doing an episode about 
Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher and Denny Masterson. So please don't ask us. Uh, <laughs> not that we don't care about it. Um, but like I said on that episode, we are obviously affected by the news and I am just not in the headspace where I can like yeah. dive into another rape trial at this particular it's juncture. like really respectfully. No, thank yeah. You. <laughs> so we are going to be doing Joe and Sophie next week. And this week we are wrapping up the ponytail files. We are wrapping up hashtag. <laughs> we forgive you Ariana Grande. Mm -hmm. We arrive in 2022 after what feels like 10,000 fucking years. We left off last week with a announcement on Instagram that Ariana Grande in December uh, had been cast in the wicked musical alongside Cynthia Erivo as Glinda. And here we are. So 2022, the reason why it. I didn't end with 2022 and kind of put it off is it is kind of a nothing year for Ariana Grande. She's on The Voice. Like, there's not really much happening. She, like we said, if you go back and you look at her Getty images, like 2022, like we did that like live on air Getty search um, mm -hmm. by recent. And like 2022 is like almost like a dead zone for Ariana Grande. It was something like... Truly, yeah, an entire like year plus long gap. Yeah, in the where she just basically was not being photographed, not doing events, not doing that sort of thing. You know, REM Beauty launched, and in January, where we're going to begin this episode, um, the Morphe parent company, former brands that owned REM Beauty and or helped launch REM Beauty, files bankrupt and files bankruptcy in January, reported by the Wall Street Journal, and they owe nearly nine hundred million <laughs> dollars now Ooh. that's a little scary morphe for those of you who know real uh -huh. Uh -huh. real heads yep. long time yep. eating for free fans the gags <laughs> the gags who have been with us know morphe as one of the central players in our James Charles by sister saga. That's literally biblical. Biblical it's text, biblical actually, when you think about scripture. it. The, the it's scripture. The gummy hair care vitamins, like, of it all. By the way, just side note, so sad. I went on uh, Tati Westbrook's YouTube, and she's no longer yeah, talking about the meat diet. She's talking. She's, <gasps> she's not already over it. it. She's not even, I don't think, over it. But I she's think like, that, that didn't happen. she was like, oh. I, she might be hiding it in the videos, but like it's all like maybe it's on like I now. watched her REM beauty review, and I also watched her like oh, Lady Gaga no. like hyaluronic, you know, fucking acid <laughs> serum mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from uh, what's it called? House 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 Labs, House Labs. House Labs. supercharged um, clean artistry. Yes, yeah, supercharged clean artistry. I say that like every other day, man. <laughs> just on repeat. <laughs> so no to me. I watched a few of her videos and I was like, this lady, like, it is as if autopilot. I'm playing a lot of the Baldur's Gate 3. The, the train I'm so, is on we're the just going to keep talking about Baldur's Gate 3. That's fine. It's like when you get inflected with a mind flayer tadpole <laughs> and you become an illithid and like and your you keep soul, consuming the mind flayers. No, no, no. Your soul leaves your body. Like mm -hmm, you might mm -hmm. retain the personality that you had as a human for a while, but like the soul of the human that you were has like left yeah. the building. Mm -hmm. Like you've been, you've been poisoned. Like, now like, you're something else. She's been Transmutation. Turned. Yeah, uh -huh. she's been turned and it's like the Tati Westbrook personality chip is still installed, but it is as if the like spark of life is gone from her eyes. It's almost like, can be like men in black where like her chest opens up and it's that little alien with the control paper. <laughs> it's not even a little alien. It's the it's parasites like, grown from eating raw meat. It's, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like an extra mutation worm, like from like the radiation in her Texas town, like under the soil. Like we find oh, out she was living on like no. a nuclear testing site, and like <laughs> the, you like, know, I was just parasites reading. have mutated, and like I was just reading rebellion. as in as in I was watching a TikTok about how they used to sell in Victorian times, like in the nineteen tens and twenties, um, literally parasite worms that you could do to like lose weight. Yeah. People would just eat worms, and That's I'm like, we're favorite. honestly so close to doing that again. Favorite new like celebrity wellness life hack is talking about the parasites like it's my favorite yes thing. they all yes, are doing the parasites enough. they're everywhere the parasites in our body the doing parasites. everything they're there they're here it's the, the new parasites. free radicals i think <laughs> you just need ube that's also the new avocado right ube and the sweet as potato, always purple powder as always once again 
Trisha Paytas was right in the end. <laughs> so about what? Many things at this point. <laughs> I love describing the revelations her keep coming as so many people do as Cassandra of Troy, like just like. <laughs> As a friend of the show said, like, she's like Cassandra in that her prophecies are always right, except it's like the whole thing about her personality is what kind of puts people off. Like, you know, understandable. If she wasn't Cassandra, people would listen to her more, but we listen because we love Trish. So uh, we're going to then now jump ahead. So, by the way, the 2023 was when Forma declares bankruptcy. I skipped ahead just a little bit. In 2022, not a lot's yeah. happening. In May, she gives an interview on YouTube, like a Q&A. Talks about preparing for Wicked in um, August. Uh, I'm glad my mom dies. Starts getting blurbed. And uh, we get that segment in the book that gets, I believe, blurbed first in the New York Times, where she talks about like Ariana Grande was being pushed to pursue stardom by Nickelodeon and her managers and she was acting with a cardboard box and it was really difficult for her like meaning Jeanette McCurdy to like handle it and the reason that she like eventually broke with Ariana Grande was like Ariana came in one day like late and was like I got invited to Tom Hanks's house last night to like play games and that just like destroyed Jeanette because she was like what am I doing here like these people don't like me and like we talked about beforehand like a lot of people at the time used a lot of this and because their nostalgic memories have like recolored the facts of what happened and what we know happened from the book, um, they were primed to assume the worst in Ariana Grande. Not realizing that like Ariana had also been, you know, allegedly in a grooming environment, the same as the rest of this cast. And we know yeah. that Jeanette was isolated and we know that Jeanette was singled out from the, you know, a le- uh, contents of her book. And as we said before, like a lot of this was like how she felt at the time. And clearly like being two teenagers who are being pitted against each other in an impossible situation. Like, of course she was going to feel resentful. Of course she was going to hate Ariana Grande. Yeah. But I think like, as we've spoken before, a lot of people used oh, so that times. for an agenda bad concerning Ariana articles. Yeah. Which also in the end did a disservice to Jeanette too, because you know, the whole thing of Ariana kind of staying out of the discourse, we believe because, you know, we, we like to pretend celebrities don't talk to each other. I, as I said, imagine that at some point Jeanette was like, can we just like not talk about this? Oh, I mean, I my book to her. There was like, no way she also wasn't going to talk to her before the book. No, came because also like of it. Ariana's still friends with some of the other victorious cast too. Mm-hmm. Right. Like she has kept up some of those relationships. So there's no way that like, you know, word also, doesn't like, get around. And also, I do think yeah. Ariana has some fucking sense. You know, she's oh. like, I'm going to stay out of this. And I know and I, Jeanette knows that there, she has her own story, I'm sure, with Dan Schneider. That has yet to be told. I hope yes. it's told at some point, but so she knows that's not her business. She was know? like, you know what? I'm busy doing Wicked. Like, Jeanette gets this moment. And then, like, yeah. I think people use the silence and they're just, like, inherently bad faith assumptions about Ariana Grande to immediately jump to conclusions that frankly are contradicted by the actual contents of the book. If you read (laughs) it. So in September, Ariana gets spotted September 2022, excuse me. uh, Ariana gets spotted on the wicked set alongside her then husband, Dalton Gomez. And then I just want to quickly also, um, I was like Ariana Grande news from September, you know, cause I go month by month. So I'm never missing Mm -hmm. anything. And which also adds a lot of work too, because like, (laughs) I mean, you got to find it. You got to get the story. Yeah, I try to be very thorough with this kind of thing because the record is not always clear. Um, This was the thing that popped up alongside the Ariana Grande spotted for the first time on Wicked Set. Um, That same week, actually, Frankie Grande uh, gives an interview to Tamron Hall about how Madonna warned him that his thruple relationship (sighs) was not going to end well. (laughs) Wait, wait, have you seen photos of Frankie Grande? I have, and I haven't seen it it since then. I'm mortified. Please look it up. Please look it up. It's literally the It's like everything I expected it to be. It's literally like. Sorry. Like, it's so like bestmailvideos.com. You need to <laughs> take that back. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> like, 
Like, Matt, like. If Brant's boys was like even more like faggotry. Matt, like. please look at this photo. <laughs> I know you're gonna send me the one I'm already looking at. I just I have yeah, it's exact of course it is. Of course it's exact. I love, I love No, but the photo of them in the galaxy like makeup um for Halloween. I don't even know what they're going as, but that one really shook me to the core. It's so like bellamionline.com. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Oh my god, please. Ooh. Faggot. Ooh. <laughs> Love and light. Love and all the light. So I've always been the type of person that says yes to whatever comes into my life. And I've never been afraid to take risks or do something unconventional. That's kind of always been my brand. So when this relationship presented itself to me, I was like, you know what? Why not? Let's just try it. Let's go in. And you know, it did not work. <laughs> I remember I was talking that to Madonna, right. of all people, talking to the queen. I told her about the thruple and she literally said, well, that's not going. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Words of wisdom. Um, also, uh, Ariana Grande said, quote, she gives me every advice. I mean, he says this of Ariana Grande. She gives me every advice. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's my sister and she's my best friend. So we talk about everything. So it has been really nice to know, to now have that common thread. Like she was married a year before I got married. Just by being so close and watching her in love, you know, we learn from each other. We lean from each other's experiences. Okay. So skipping forward 2023, love and light, Forma Brands files for bankruptcy, $900 million. (laughs) And Ariana, (laughs) from what I read... I believe that one of the former Smashbox executives uh, joins REM Beauty and they basically like buy the stock, I think, in February for like something like $15 million. Like Ariana Mm. buys basically all the stock from Forma and is like, okay, this is my company now. And uh, kind of puts it in the hands of uh, one of the people who was like Estee Lauder exec, Smashbox, et cetera, et cetera. So mm-hmm. um, in July 17th, 2023, Ariana Grande and Dalton Gomez split after two years of marriage. This is after a very this quiet year begins. for Ariana. Um, you know, she gets like stuff that kind of goes viral over the last year. Like that's really what had been keeping her, you know, name in people's mouths. Um, she also has a song with The Weeknd that comes out. We really don't have to talk about it. Um, I also think that one of the things that goes viral is that video of her like switching accents. Like if you look at recent Ariana Grande news from like the end of 2022, beginning of 2023, it's like lad Bible. Like, you know, all those like content mills, like oh, bar God, school yeah. and stuff uh, are like uh-huh. fans left confused as Ariana Grande <laughs> switches accents. And that's really the most press she gets. So in July, We already talked about this in an earlier Patreon episode, so we are going to be a little bit succinct with the affair stuff because we have kind of tread this ground already. Um, Following the news of the couple's separation directly from People, a source tells People that the singer and actress 30 was filming the Wicked adaptation in the UK for much of the year and, quote, she was happy in LA for a couple years. She wanted, and now this is very important, you guys. We talked about this in the last episode. Now keep it in your minds. She wanted to make a life there with Dalton. He is super focused on his career and needs to live in LA. It's definitely been an issue for them. Dalton's career is demanding and he can't leave LA often. So when Grande started filming Wicked in England, they were in a long distance marriage. Someone's going to sell those $100 million penthouses. Yes. <laughs> Although it quote didn't work. The insider says Ari has nothing but kind words to say about Dalton. During their marriage, he was their number one fan on Monday in July 17th, as of July 17th, 2022, multiple sources also say that they've basically been like yeah. 23, excuse me. They have been quietly, lovingly working on their friendship since they had split earlier in the year quietly. Um, in a series of recent photos at the time, she, you know, posted photos of the Wicked set and just kind of like had kept it pushing, not addressing the dissolution of her marriage on social media. Now, TMZ also 
gets a hold of this. And Matt, let's talk about this next article while I look up this TMZ quote that I'm finding really quickly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Get them going, girl. Yeah. So basically a few days after news comes out about Ariana Grande and Dalton Gomez uh, splitting and eventually divorcing, um, we then literally, the shit hits a fan on July 20th, on my birthday, that uh, Ariana Grande is dating Wicked co-star Ethan Slater after split. Um, So there's obviously many sources we can go here. The one we chose is from People. Um, Basically, Ariana and Dalton separated in January when the source tells People. She and Ethan recently began dating and he is separated from his wife. Now, this is before... Ethan's wife starts speaking to the press before kind of, which we'll get into later, the ins and outs of how exactly that went down. But that's how the story starts. Um, Insider told people this week that Grande's work on the Wicked movie Across the Pond was partially to blame. Like we just said, put a long distance strain on the relationship. Quote, she was happy in Los Angeles for a few years. She wanted to make a life here with Dalton. We already talked about this. Um, Though the relationship didn't work, Arya has nothing but kind words to say, et cetera, et cetera. All the same kind of quotes here. Slater, meanwhile, and this is married uh, high school classmate Lily J in November of 2018. In January, he revealed that he and Jay welcomed their first child by sharing a photo of her in the onesie. Um, Super vague post. We have a baby now. He wrote an Instagram. Uh, Though it remains unclear if the couple um, has started the divorce process yet. Or if there's a reason for the split that happened before, during, or after this news kind of broke. With, yes. Uh, Ariana, and Ariana. when the news of Ariana Grande and Dalton broke three days prior on the 17th, after the initial reports came out, one of the things that TMZ said, and I just wanted to quickly find this while you were talking about the actual affair, um, TMZ gets a different angle of a different source. And this is obviously Dalton's people. Um Quote, when COVID restrictions lifted, we're told that their differences became alarmingly apparent. Alarmingly. Negative. If this was Ariana's yes. people, they would not use alarmingly. They would use sadly. They would use mm-hmm. unfortunately. You know, they would use something that's like sympathetic and melancholy. Like, man, like they just couldn't yeah, make it right. happen. Right. But this is mm-hmm. alarmingly. Right. This it's is like. Word. A, Yeah, because they're also probably trying to prime for the affair, right? Mm -hmm. So Dalton, an L.A. realtor, was taken aback by, taken aback, another negative, by Ariana's celebrity. He had not dealt with her schedule, the paparazzi, and various opportunities that took her out of L.A. We are told that Dalton would sometimes question why they needed to go around town with security. Painting Ariana as a diva, painting her as frivolous, painting her as like... You know, like out of touch. Something suspicious. You can't trust her almost. The differences started to make the marriage unravel. And it was, quote, greatly exacerbated. Negative again. When she went to England last December to film Wicked. By January, they were separated, but on friendly terms. They began living separate lives until May when they decided to take a shot at it again. And that lasted about two weeks before they both called it quits. And there is a photo of them from June 2021. Um, that they post here of all of them out and about with friends kind of being like, look at their normal lives before things took a turn. (laughs) Uh Fact is we're told Dalton has quote been dating over the last month months, which was fine with Ariana. Our sources say both Ariana and Dalton were quote shocked. No one picked up on the separation until today when TMZ broke the story, they had gone their separate ways and were headed for divorce court. Now, This is what's interesting to me. And we talk about this in the last episode, so I won't harp on it like too much because I drove this point home last time. Dalton has been around the lifestyle, right? Like this is one thing that I found infuriating about the press that week, as well as the reaction from people who were like quick to basically call Ariana a, you know, fucking like Jezebel, whore, harlot, homewrecker, man eater. Was that like... And Dalton's some like homeboy. Yeah. Guy. Oh, like, like, look, she can't even make it work with a normal guy. And it's like the man sells mama. <laughs> tens of millions of dollars worth of homes to the rich and famous and most powerful people in Hollywood. Like, he I, has I don't been, know the exact financials, he, but he's he could be making just as much as her easily. Like, he literally, well, she's worth like 200 million. So I that, think he's, mm, I mean, I think he's like comfortably <laughs> making millions. He's raking in money. Yeah. That, like, if the rumors are true that he dated Miley Cyrus and or just was friends with Miley Cyrus for a very long time prior to ever meeting Ariana Grande, it's also just simply not true that he would have been surprised by what it's like to be friends or dating or married to a celebrity. Because, like, sorry, 
this is actually a compliment to both of them. Miley Cyrus is for all intents and purposes in the LA ecosystem as famous as Ariana Grande when it comes to the paparazzi. Yeah, she's okay? a global superstar as well yeah. in regards she's like a everyone huge she's star. a household name. Absolutely. There's nothing you are experiencing with Miley Cyrus who also gets the controversy press too, which exacerbates oh, And those her. photos they have together back in 2014 when it was really bad for her. <laughs> yeah, it was re- she, and and he was like literally being photographed with her in the thick of it, right? In the literal thick of controversy. There is simply no way that he would have not understood what he was getting into. Still I think it might be like, "Oh, there's a different side of you," right? Because I've gotten quarantine and chill Ariana Grande. I've gotten the Ariana Grande that stays home with me all day watching movies and like, you know, doing Jennifer Coolidge impressions. I haven't had the Ariana Grande that's in board meetings and flying across the country and the Ariana Grande that has to be on set and doing press. Like I had the Ariana Grande with really for all intents and purposes while she was on The Voice had a nine to five job, you know? Yeah. Like that makes sense. But the like, oh, he was taken aback. And the way that people ran with that was just like a historical. I'm like, this is not rooted in reality. Like they met through fucking Miley Cyrus. And also again, like there's so much conflicting press coming out, obviously from two different camps that are like, he was her biggest fan. Like it's all amicable. Like they literally separate in January. It's been six months since. So like at that point, what is supposedly going to be so shocking that she can do if they haven't been together in six months? 100%. 100%. So I'll grab this uh, TMZ divorce headline and then you can jump on with what the wife says after the mm-hmm. TMZ. So Ariana Grande's, this is from July 26th. So about a week later, um, quote, Ariana Grande's boyfriend wants a totally clean slate going into his new relationship with the singer, filing for divorce from his estranged wife. According to legal documents obtained by TMZ, Ethan Slater decided to legally end things Wednesday with Lily J filing divorce papers in New York. We don't know the specific reasons Ethan listed for the split. The move isn't necessarily surprising. TMZ broke the story that they've been together for several months now. Sources told us they were both single when they started dating after meeting on the set of Wicked. Quote, however, sources close to Lily told us that she was heartbroken to hear about Ethan's new relationship and feels he abandoned his brand new family. As for Ethan and Ariana's side of Lily's claims, a source close to the two told us, quote, it's understandable that emotions are high and it's hard seeing your ex move on, especially in a public way and her friends are trying to protect her. But Ari and Ethan are just trying to lay low and be respectful of their exes as they pursue this new relationship. Now, before you jump in with what the wife says, actually jump in with what the wife says and I'll say something. <laughs> I mean, it basically comes out the same day from TMZ. This is like yeah. really the height of like the mania of it all. Um, so basically, Erin Agron and Ethan Slater's romance came as a surprise to Broadway actors now a strange now a strange wife who feels like he abandoned his family. Sources close to Lily J um, tell us she's devastated. Her family's been torn apart. She's also upset their young son, who was born in just of August of 2022, only a year old, won't have both his mom and dad around constantly now that they split. What's more, we're told Ariana actually used to hang out with both Ethan and Lily while they were still a happily married couple. And she even liked his Instagram tribute to Lily on Mother's Day of this year. So obviously, like we've been talking about, allegedly, Ariana Ethan's romantic relationship started several months ago. The whole thing apparently has left Lily feeling betrayed and heartbroken, according to multiple sources. Another source of the situation told TMZ, Quote, it's understandable that emotions are high and it's hard seeing your ex move on, especially in such a public way. Yeah, we already read this quote earlier. So, And later, uh, Page Six reports that, quote, Lily J has been calling every news outlet to get the story act, to get this mm-hmm. story out. Specifically, you know, in a new, uh, you know, comment that she says, you know, her family's collateral damage. Ariana Grande is not a girl's girl. My family is just collateral one. damage. Truly. <laughs> she says that the story is her and Dalton and that, you know, she has basically been, you know, fucked over by Ariana Grande who hates women, et cetera, et cetera. Now, again, we're not here to bash Lily J. Like this lady suddenly became very famous in a way that she probably was not used to. And her ex-husband is dating one of the most famous people on the planet. I understand that you are rightfully upset. If my ex went on to date Ariana Grande, I probably would act like a fucking crazy person too. She's also, Lily is a um, psychology lab assistant and like clinical psychology extern. So like she's really not, even though obviously Ethan has been like doing some more professional Broadway work, this is like leaps and bounds above what she's used Um, to. She adds that like they have, you know, like you say, you know, Ariana hung out with them when they were a couple. And like, again, what I think is interesting is like, 
cheating is not a crime. It's certainly not a good look. It's certainly not a good thing to do. I think like the way that you live your life uh, reflects in the things that also, you know, you like, I think the way that you live your yes. life. It's a moral can, crime to many. Yeah. Affect your life as well. And that seems like a very obvious thing to say, but I feel like if you're making consistently bad choices, you are headed for badness, I think is like the simplest way to say it. I'm not trying to say, I'm trying to say it in a way that's like karma. I just don't want to like ascribe anything to karma. Like you get what's coming to you kind of bullshit. Of course, just, but that's very much the language. But yeah, like, you know, lot, it's the vibe of like, if you hang out with a bunch of bad people and like people who are like not making great choices, like our parents used to say, like the chances <laughs> of you getting pulled into something mm-hmm. not great for you is very high. And unfortunately it's extremely true. <laughs> yeah. And I think that with Ariana, we have seen especially with these child stars you know later in life get put into that was like the stupidest thing to say i'm so sorry you guys i really was like just basically (laughs) trying to basically say like karma can sometimes feel real but i really don't believe in karma so like i was trying to say it in a way that just wasn't like what's coming around comes around you know like sorry i just i i was thinking back on what i was saying i was like don't shut the fuck up okay so I think that we see a lot with these child stars that they get caught up in like a very insular way of living where they have this kind of like all or nothing approach to the people in their life. Right. Like you're not like thinking in like a community minded way. You're thinking in like a self preservation way because exactly. you live you're in a world. You're thinking about the press. You're thinking yeah, about there we reputation. Go. That's what I'm trying to say. Your world is only about you, and so I think to people who are not like in that machine, it often looks like you're just a selfish asshole. Which sometimes, most of the time, they are. They are well, selfish assholes. You think you can be the most famous person on the planet and not, and be, not be self obsessed? I'm like, sorry. Like you wouldn't have like, gotten there. Sorry, and that's yeah. fine. Like that's how the world works in ways. Also, like I keep thinking back to the comment or the sources that were like Ariana and like Dalton are shocked that like it took so long for people to find out that they had separated. And I'm like, uh, is that not like an active effort on their part to keep? <laughs> Like, obviously, she's not going to come out and do a press release about it immediately. That yeah. would be a very specific choice. But, like, you clearly made sure that you were not in the public eye so that that wouldn't be taken on for a while. So you had the private time to work things out. 100%. And I also think, so the reason I bring up the karma stuff was that, like, like cheating is not a crime. And also, like, for instance, I'll use this as an example, right? Because this actually is something that, like, didn't necessarily happen to us. But, like, we have relationship experience with mm-hmm. this. I say, for instance, you were heterosexual, right? No. <laughs> and say you were friends with a girl that I was yeah. never friends with, uh-huh. right? Never friends with her. Didn't know her like that. I was friends with you. And I saw her on occasion, but like we were coworkers, which we were. Mm-hmm. And this other girl was just like a non-entity to me, right? Like it was like, she was not my friend. I didn't know her. And eventually you two break up. And we have had a very close friendship. Maybe probably at some point it became inappropriate how intimately close we were considering you were having these feelings. But you break things off and then you get with me. Mm -hmm. Assuming that's what's happened. Like, sure, it's probably like the second you had feelings for me, you probably should have said something. But like, I didn't have any... I don't have any loyalty to this girlfriend I've never met. And or if I have met, I'm not friends with her like that, right? Like, it's my coworker's wife. Exactly. And so the idea that like Ariana Grande is beholden to Ethan Slater's wife before Ethan Slater, when she is working with Ethan Slater and like seeing him every day is weird to me as like a moral stance to take. Like, I think if someone has children, you probably should not pursue them because if you do get into a relationship with them, you think that's going to be fun and easy. You want to be a mom? Like, you want to be a mom to some kids with an ex wife who hates you? Like, one year old baby. I mean, if allegedly, because we'll get into it later, if they had been seeing each other and flaunting, as the words, as the tabloids lawyers say, their relationship in front of everybody months before that, before it all came out, um, that was like a eight month, six month year old baby. Yeah, no, exactly. Like, listen, like, like I would never, I would never get entangled with a guy with a year old because, like, good like one luck, honey. No offense, no offense to Lily J. Again, we don't know the lady. We are not trashing her in any way. And the point of this episode is to 
really like look at the facts of what happened and try and make sense of the reaction to it. We're not casting aspersions on Lily J, Ariana. Because the only, only person knows. really I think we should cast aspersions on is fucking Ethan Slater, who is the one right. who is married. <laughs> Let's who's be the honest. one who made this choice? I've been saying who's this the since the one who it all got happened. a preg- got a woman pregnant, who he was married to, who he has been with since high school. Goes off, gets suddenly famous, preps to get even more famous, gets a little bit of attention from the world's most famous pop star, and decides that actually married life is not for me. I'm going to risk it all, and I'm going to get with fucking Ariana. Like that's the person I think that we should all be casting aspersions on. And I keep really thinking, Ariana girl. I would just be careful because any man that does that is probably an opportunist. Well, like, I was about to say as well, like, do you really want to be involved in that? I keep thinking as someone who's been in a long-term relationship, literally getting near 10 years. I, the idea that like one of us would just suddenly be with somebody else, especially after an insane life of it, like having a child. Yeah. It is like, actually mind-boggling i would legitimately be like psychiatric evaluation for the person who did that what was going on i know you're so right and i think the other thing is that like we're actually going to talk about this with sophie turner next week but i think you just don't do that you just don't do that casually it's something that's been building for a long time i think what also is is that like the world and internet was primed to jump on this in the most like visceral, like misogynistic oh, way possible because Scandaval had just happened. And look at the way that primed Rachel and ready to fight Levis again. received the extreme reaction to Scandaval. And Tom Sandoval walked away relatively unscathed after sharing revenge porn. After like emotionally, psychologically torturing, his literally ex. on tour of his shitty cover band. Like, I mean, not like it was selling getting out per paid se, but more money than God yeah. to stay on the show. Yep, and gets to film basically a hate campaign against his ex, as well as like harass his other ex on Instagram, who is not with him anymore and blocked him this week. Like, I think that had Scandal not happened. I'm not going to say that this would have gone over differently, but I think that the press around it would not have gotten so heated immediately. There's definitely a Venn diagram happening between because the I think that, like, again, it was like in the snark blogs, the internet was primed to be like another cheating scandal, another woman wronged, right? And again, it's always funny that when men make fucking horrible life decisions, it is always the women in their wife that their life that suffers. Lily J is suffering and Ariana Grande is suffering, suffering in not the same way by any means. Ariana Grande's life is in no way comparable to Lily J, but suffering in the sense that yeah, like she's they fine. became the story. <laughs> like Ariana Grande was the one that got the top SEO headlines of this experience, not Ethan Slater. Ethan Slater got the who's Ethan Slater, right? Ariana Grande got he- bitch Ariana Grande fucking does another home wrecking experience. Oh, also, Ethan, as we'll talk about later, got a new job. He's like going to spam a lot. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Reputation is, like, is just fine. <laughs> just fine. And so is Ariana's really, right? Like this is yeah. all like misogyny on the internet, right? The in, the industry is not going to like drop Ariana Grande over cheating on her husband. If that was the case, nobody in Hollywood would have a fucking job, right? Because like <laughs> everyone on set is cheating with each other. Exactly. The other thing that's interesting, though, is it's like... Two things can be true that Lily is hurt by this and also that like Ethan probably cut things off or things were clear that they weren't together anymore. And she is upset about that and projecting about that. And those both of those things can be true, right? Like her saying like, you know, he's like, uh, like I'm collateral damage and like she's destroying our family. Like she can feel like that and also be wronged by Ethan. But also at the same time they also could have been split up like both of those things could be true they exactly. don't negate each other right and i think it's just again you know this tmz source and page six source they both say that like she's been spinning this yarn to everybody which again i probably would too like if my <laughs> oh ex, absolutely if my, i tried to actually i can't say that <laughs> i dated someone one time that went on to almost have a very, very big opportunity. And the thought of it made me, I was like a mad person when I found out about this. I mean, if the world, I mean, like millions, nearly a billion people are talking about your relationship. Like, why would you not be like, I'm getting the guns out? Like, yeah, (laughs) I'm getting Um, the machine gun ready. But (laughs) what's interesting is like, 
the sources also say that like she is dogging Ariana to the press and behind the scenes trying to repair things with Ethan. And I think, again, two things can be true, right? Like she can hate him. He can have destroyed her family. And she also probably wants to still make things work. Do yeah. you want to be a fucking single mother with Ariana Grande as a stepmom? No, mm. I am going to make it work. Woof. We're going to try to stick this out <laughs> until Ariana is no longer in the picture. And then I will like, set you on your way. You're going like, to give me my money, which we'll talk about later. That oh, it's probably part of it. You're going to give me my child support money and we're going to just like not do this again. So... <laughs> I just think this source is very interested. So Jay was blindsided by the relationship and says, quote, it's horrible. They were high school sweethearts. They have a baby. She's a wreck. And also, you know, an insider said that Grande and Gomez, Dalton, have, you know, remained really good friends. Their friends and families have been trying to protect them, et cetera, et cetera. Ethan's taking the high road and hopes he can resolve the situation for the sake of their child. So... About a, like a few days after all of this breaks, did all of that make sense? By the way, was that just like wild rambling on our part? No, I think it made sense. total sense to me. I'm I just always in. like I just I think <laughs> this was the episode I was dreading the most because this is the episode that people have the most contentious feelings about. I don't think the people that really like our show would disagree with what we're saying. Is all no, maybe. no. We have to remember and that. I just know that this is also the episode where we could get to. This is our niche contact. internet podcast, you know. World. They you know? they clip the like one second where I say like you know cheating's bad, but is it really? And that's the thing that becomes a story. <laughs> not well, the thing around it is it. a fact that cheating is not a crime. If y'all want to go make it a crime, we can maybe have a conversation. But <laughs> yeah. So um, Ariana Grande then gives quote Ethan. Sp- to work things out with estranged wife and this, this was is, a few this days is later hilarious so me. what is what does tmz say about this tell me so um erna grande hasn't apparently seen ethan slater in person for a while again this is at the end of july so we have some updates as we get closer to now um because he isn't preoccupied um because he is preoccupied with his estranged wife and their divorce and she's giving him space to quote unquote work things out sources with direct knowledge tell tmz that ariana and her wicked co-star haven't been in the same city for even several weeks ethan's currently in new york trying to navigate the end of his marriage with his estranged wife lily J. sources also say that ariana's coming to los angeles this weekend again at the end of july we're told she and ethan want to see each other but that's not really in the cards of the immediate future yeah ethan's got to a lot of workout with Lee J. They share a child, obviously, desperate co parenting, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, they've been told that um, Ethan and Lee have been talking daily, mostly about how they're going to co parent their newborn child. Yeah. And ET has um, an update of the same day that, you know, Ethan and Ariana connected as friends and started dating after their splits. Ariana and Dalton both realized they were from very different people and quietly separated. Ariana and Ethan connected as friends first because they have a lot in common and many similar interests. Um, What's interesting here is in August, August 3rd, the New York Post reports that Ariana was told to take things slower. Quote, Ariana has been told to take things uh, that it's too soon to go public with him and take things slower. That was first reported in Us Weekly. The tipster also says, quote, she's very aware of how she's perceived by her fans and she's trying to be mature, but if it was up to her, she'd be seen with him tomorrow. Oof. Things are heating up behind the scenes. <laughs> Publicly, they're backing off, but in reality, they're not. See, that's I, a very interesting thing to say in the press. <laughs> but no, it's true, though. I think that that's like one of the more honest things that has come out of this. Right. We know this about Ariana, right? Like, right. she meets a guy and the next week, if we have learned anything over this series, <laughs> she is married in a week. Yeah. Like, maybe not married <laughs> legally, but married certainly emotionally. It's like, very cancer, you know, antics. Like, we're in the home, we're cooking, we're making food. Don't, we're fucking. <laughs> don't, don't get me started about your cancerian relationship ways. Don't get me started. We're, like, truly terrorist, I think. Also, he's a Gemini, so... Ooh. Sorry. Good luck. That's very incompatible. Wait, wait. <laughs> Cancer Gemini compatibility. Okay, where is the bonus episode Cancer already where we get like a Cancer Gemini specialist? relationship may seem to be an unlikely pair, but both make a few compromises and adjustments and can become a stable long-term relationship. I don't know about that. Um, wait, what else is <laughs> Not that I would know, but like 
I'll Let's get along see. with Gemini's. Uh, but also, I'm the kind of cancer that doesn't relate to most, where like I actually do keep my shit together, relatively but, speaking. Well, that's, okay, so <laughs> the, whether you're seeking love or friendship, there are some challenges to a Gemini Cancer relationship. For starters, the homemaking nature of Cancer tends to clash with the independent seeking persona of yeah, Gemini. Exactly. The emotional dependence of the sensitive crab can also be too caging for carefree twins. Shocking, considering he left his newborn. <laughs> That's what I'm what, saying. Child, like, like shocking. Talking about shocking. the two-faced metaphor. Again, like, and this is also the thing that drives me crazy about this is like, again, people are talking about it like, oh god, Ariana Grande's fucking ruining another relationship, and it's like, why don't we talk about the fact that yet another father with a newborn has left his fucking family because he was like caged and held back and tail like, is old as time tail, tail is old as time, old as time. <laughs> tail is old as, oh god Men a man with shit. a newborn news went breaking and had an affair like <laughs> jesus christ another one like add that one to like the fucking scroll and you unfurl it and it's like 40 <laughs> miles long like, <laughs> and it's just from this week like, it's like literally from genesis <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's literally holy scripture at this point that like Famous men will leave their families the second they just feel like they're being held back, right? Um, <laughs> also, uh, they say that in a nutshell, some of the challenges, Geminis are unpredictable and indecisive, whereas Cancers need strong, have strong emotions and can get on the nerves of the Gemini. Crabs need security and stability. However, Geminis might be unable to provide this due to their need for frequent change and stimulation. Exactly. Geminis yeah. also love to explore new places and relationships, while those born under cancer prefer to stay at home and be more insular. See, this is the thing with Erna Grande and the cancer thing that I think I can understand is that she is very much that kind of person who does want that homeliness. Why she fully commits to a personality and entire yes. like ethos and aesthetic because she wants to feel in that, live homely in that. But she's also a mega pop star global celebrity which yes. is basically the most unpredictable chaotic destabilizing work you could possibly do so i think it's very push and pull in that way and that she basically goes all in has to pull completely out goes back in all again and also we know and that just with, fits with everything we've seen yeah look at what years. happened with mac miller look yeah. at what happened with pete davidson weren't they what was it engaged after two months like <laughs> yeah literally it was like, like a four month long venture and yet it like, felt like, like years of we stories. know what she's like with relationships like this is not new so, quote, Ariana Grande apparently took Dalton on several double dates with Ethan and Lily J before she and Ethan started dating. This is where it starts getting a little, like, messy boots. So insiders say, <laughs> quote, Ariana and Dalton went on double dates with Ethan and Lily several times and they were seen out by cast members. Um, they said that, you know, they were basically flaunting this affair on set quote they were sloppy they were seen being all over each other while he was still supposedly happily married to lily i hate to say i believe this one. no i fully like, believe it that. that's what i'm that's saying just like, what it's like when people are you know fucking on the side <laughs> that's my girl that's Especially my girl work setting. but i fully don't believe that they waited until no, he had left her. I don't her. think so. No, I mean, again, I don't. Ariana and Dalton have confirmed on the record that they had separated in January. Yes. I mean, granted, the filming was before that, but like... Um, I no, well, do... they were still filming. They were still on set. Well, that's why... I'm, oh, yeah, that's true. That's what I mean. That's what I mean for at least Ariana's side, but like yeah. Ethan Lily was, again, continuing up until... Now, this is this the part where I'm just July. like... This is the part where I'm like, again... Ugh, Ariana like this is the part where it's like I I don't I don't condone this behavior like, really like if my this. friends were acting like this I'd be like you are setting yourself up for a world of hurt one again how you get I fully believe how you get them is how you lose them I fully ascribe to that I, I have I enough agree. anecdotal evidence I have enough like confirmed scientific Watch any season of Housewives as well yeah. you will see that every time and I believe it right like if same with Love gonna, Island too like that is tested formula <laughs> listen again i tell people this all the time no shade if people will cheat on beyonce people will cheat on basically like the most gorgeous <laughs> all beautiful, you need to know, really talented successful women <laughs> in the world they will cheat on you if they will cheat on their wife who just had a baby like did we they not will learn about lemonade you. hello like did hello. we all not witness like, that <laughs> so the fact that she quote met their baby and even held him. They had dinners together in London yeah, and Ariana it's, told Lily it's that bad. she wanted to have a baby one day and she <laughs> couldn't wait to start a family. This is the part where I started the wind to me, like levitating out of my body. Like, you know the Winnie the Pooh gif where the soul like leaves the body and starts spinning up into the ceiling? Like, this is the part where I was like... Oh. 
That's why Lily is allowed to get out the big yeah. guns. Like I would, Listen. if I was her, I would also be like death to everyone. But I also think that like Lily should get her lashings in. But I also think that, that like check. the press giving attention to Lily in that moment, just like by the way, the press giving attention to the Scandaval situation was not because there is a justice for Lily movement, right? Like. Not because, like, there was this concerted effort to, like, protect Lily and everyone feels, like, genuinely no. bad for her. It's exploiting her. It's yeah, knowing her that this woman moment. is vulnerable, reactive, and highly, highly emotional. And you are going to farm that for rage because rage sells. You're going to farm that for drama because drama sells. Like... They are egging Lily on with all of this, right? And that's the part where I feel like there is a (sighs) moral quandary is not the right word. What am I trying to say? There's like no winning here. (laughs) Yeah, it's no winning. But I I think it's like it's opportunism at its best. And Mm -hmm. I just think that like when people are like, well, this is what Lily's saying. It's like, yeah, Lily says this under duress. Lily is saying this in like a reactive moment at the very point of finding out about this affair. Like, just look at perfect example, what Ariana said to Rachel at the reunion. Like, she has gone back on record and said, if I could go back and refilm the reunion now, I wouldn't have gone as hard at her, knowing what I know now, knowing what she's going through, knowing how troubled she is. Like, I wouldn't have said the things like you are scum, you are nothing, nobody loves you and you're going to die alone. Like those kinds of things. Like Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have said that. But also it was within the first few weeks of me finding out about this. My life was falling apart all around me. I'm the number one story in the world and I'm reactive. I'm angry. Like, of course I'm going to say this. Right. But like these people like TMZ and page six are one trying to have this agenda to sell ads, to sell clicks to farm this narrative that they have been building about Ariana Grande for 10 years. And also they have a woman who is really ready to say literally the first thing that comes to her mind and just, oh, and you know, this. they're asking her like, what would you say to him? If you could, which is also him why right now, like what kind of other horrible things has he done? Like, has he cheated be, on you in the past? Like they're going to ask again, a million questions to it. Like, violence. Like, I don't think that, like, the page six people were like, let's include that line about her going and running and telling this to everybody because then she's going to react to it again, right? Like, it's not that, it's not that cunning, but fueling this and, like, offering all of this shit behind the scenes that normally you wouldn't say the, like, like, normally if I know a source has gone to me and someone else, usually it's bad form to like throw your sources under the bus. Usually it's bad (laughs) form unless the goal is to humiliate somebody. Like you really just should not be doing that unless I mean, it's like a fucking politician or like a serial killer. TMZ we're talking about. Yeah, Yeah. no, but like page six (laughs) did that because it is just more chaos and confusion. Right. And it just whips everyone up into a frenzy. I mean, look at what happened on Twitter. It was fucking in shambles. Which is why we waited this long, because now we have way more to talk about with better, yeah. much better hindsight. So August 9th, Ethan lands a new role. What's this role that he gets? So, um, yeah, this is the spam lot of it all. <laughs> um, so basically, he's heading back to play the historian slash Prince Herbert in the revival of Spam a Lot. Um, that's based on the 1975 Monty Python film. Um, that was announced on August 9th. I don't know when the play is. Oh, it's actually going to premiere. Yeah, August. Um, sorry, October 31st on yeah. Halloween of this year. So he's currently practicing it. Um, we'll get into it a bit later. He's posting on Instagram some like rehearsal footage for the play. Um, yeah. So we also get that um, Ariana Grande's boyfriend, Ethan, in the next week is locked in now a contested divorce um, in the Tompton, Tompkins County Courthouse in Ithaca, New York. Um, it says that Lily is, you know, contesting the divorce and shows that these two are not on the same page. Um as somebody who went through an uncontested divorce recently, which was still <laughs> yeah, you can speak excruciating. On this. Um, what happens is, and I'm just going to speak for the state of California, which is a shared property state. Um, so, or like, yeah, has like marital property mm-hmm. laws. Contested divorce is the kind of divorce that you hear about. And this is the thing where it's like contested divorce is like a play on words to 
extrapolate this narrative that things are heated, but yeah. Yeah. most divorces, actually the majority <laughs> of divorces are contested divorce. Right. The word contested divorce is actually a legal framework for divorce that applies to a lot of states where like, I'll use my divorce as an example. I basically went to my ex and was like, we're getting a divorce. You're going to sign this paper because we are on the same page that we are getting a divorce. We are poor. We have nothing. We are not going to pay lawyers to fight this out in court because what are we fighting over? Dust, right? Cockroaches. Like, what are we fighting over? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And we both share your property. You share your debts. You share your finances with each other. You sign off on that saying like, this is everything I have. This is everything you have. And then you draft a settlement agreement together, basically saying like, this is the way that we're going to split everything. We've decided this between ourselves, no lawyers, and we are signing and guaranteeing that we are not suing each other for a divorce. And then the judge, there is in California, a six month holding period. And then the judge makes a judgment. And sometimes the judgment is like, you need to go back and you need to... um, redo this property settlement agreement. It's not quote unquote fair. Or in that time, your partner can call off the uncontested divorce, basically say, you know what? I don't want to get a divorce. And then it would become contested if you were to refile and sue them. Now, a contested divorce is this. Say I married somebody and I tried to leave them and they didn't want to leave me. I can have them served with legal papers. still insane to me that that's how it works i serve them with legal papers and i say oh i God. want to divorce you so fucked up i am leaving you and we are getting a divorce from there they have the option of responding or not responding if they have been served it's like a flow chart that we can go through here if they have been served if they have literally been handed the divorce papers and yep. in california don't respond in 30 days the suing party, the uh, uh, plaintiff, plaintiff, excuse me, yes, can file a motion with the court to say, my person is being uncooperative. The court will give them a notice. Like, if you do not respond in 30 days, we are going to proceed with what we think is fair. And then the court decides, right? And you have no power over that as the defendant. If you do choose to respond, which most cases people will, because if it's going to be a contested divorce, if we have to sue in the first place, usually it's because there's something that you want. Then you get a lawyer, maybe the person has a lawyer, and then you fight in court, right? You file motions. You say, this is a settlement agreement. This is what we agree to. This is what we don't agree to. And that's the divorce you see in TV. Most divorces in this country, unless they are poor people or people who were married for legal reasons and then no longer need to be married and it's uncontested because it's like, you know what? Like Extremely we mutually we're still best upon. friends. We yeah. just don't want to be married anymore. You know, yeah. like that was not how mine was. It just was like, we have no assets <laughs> and we have no money and I can't pay lawyers. You know, like what mm-hmm. are we going to do here? Um, I think that the word contested is being used here strategically to again, drive engagement. Well, but like the word contested really doesn't mean anything. It's like, they're locked in a bitter divorce, right? Contested divorce is like saying the word divorce itself. Like, like it's like, like I was gonna say it's like the default option. It's yeah, actually it's quite the rare default otherwise. option. And also, again, of I think course the, it's contested. Of course, that it's bitter. Like she's yeah. clearly angry. He's clearly there's a child out. involved, which is gonna he's about always to get a make a fat paycheck if he hasn't been paid already. Not to mention royalties. Not to mention future profits. Not to mention things that haven't been announced yet that came into play during their marriage, not to mention the fact that they got married like as high school sweethearts, meaning they probably absolutely don't have a fucking, um, (sighs) what is it? A prenup. Yeah. Yeah. And they probably don't have a postnup either. And of course it's going to be fucking contested. You think he's just going to be like, yeah, here, I'll give you 50% of my earnings. Yeah. Here we'll give you 50% of my assets. You think she's just going to be okay with like whatever his lawyers think she deserves? Like, no, of course not. This is like, normal especially when she's gonna easily have the argument of look what's happened to me in the press like of course you need to be able to of course she's the sympathetic party and again i think also like and she doesn't want to probably have him take care of the child um, in the situation that he's going through (laughs) let me say this because i know we have some gags out there who are considering marriage getting married whatever (laughs) what have you i don't fucking care if you are a nobody I don't fucking care if you live in Waco, Texas, 
and are going to make 30 grand for the rest of your life. (laughs) I don't care if you don't plan on being famous or rich or any of the above. I don't care if you love your fucking partner and plan on being them them for the rest of your fucking life. I don't care if like you are star crossed fucking Romeo and Juliet shit. I don't care. (sighs) If you could hear this just a few years back, if you are getting married, (laughs) sign some fucking paperwork about what happens when you get divorced. No, this happens all the time in the housewives. They're like, it's actually not about the divorce happening and it's bad and you need to save yourself. It's quite literally the state will decide what happens as you are very familiar with. And would you rather have the state help you with how this is going to go down? No, 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 no. The laws of this country as a woman are still designed around you being marital property, even if that is not what those laws are saying. I mean, again, the fact that you can't just divorce somebody on your own will you actually have to have them agree or else a lawsuit happens is disgusting like it's insane and again people might not know this maybe you actually are truly rose-tinted nostalgia trad-pilled and you think that marriage is simply a romantic thing to do but in this it's like, country, it's like the least romantic. Marriage I'm is sorry. a business institution. Yeah, it is a you might not property think it right. is, but it is business to the government. It is business. You tax gets diff- your taxes get different because you are being taxed as a business class. I am fully, fully, fully paraphrasing there. But the reason that I mean, you are marriage, taxed a different type of entity. I That's mean, the marriages, the reason that you get different tax benefits, the different loan options that you get, yep, yep, the different yep. like classification with financial. And this is why most people when also married. get married because if you're not married, you For are like suffering much harder. Yeah, one hundred percent. The reason your healthcare changes everything. And again, let me just say, I did not get married thinking I was ever going to get divorced. I got married because no one I thought does. I had found somebody <laughs> who I was going to spend with for the rest of my life, must spend the rest of my life with, okay? I would not have gotten married if I thought there was a chance of me getting a divorce and look what happened. And guess what? Not having a fucking prenup even with my fucking negative $20 was <laughs> hell. It was fucking hell. And, and it in your situation too, you didn't even of, have someone that wanted to try you or like put all the work in. It's still hell even if they're like baseline. Yeah. Which is crazy. Even if they are just rolling over and dying, like it's still hell. And I cannot stress enough get a fucking prenup. The institution of marriage cannot be rehabilitated in this country, okay? The institution of marriage is inherently anti feminist and predatory for women specifically and men too. It really benefits just men, but like we got to save these men as well, even if they don't want to be saved and even if they don't fucking deserve it. But like, When you are a woman, the institution of marriage is inherently set up against you, no matter what these men's rights activists get online and say about like child support and whatever, what have you, mother's rights, all these things that they love to harp on as being like the reason men are the most subjugated class in the entire world. Like marriage cannot be rehabilitated by you and your husband. Please, God, get a fucking prenup. And and you are going to sleep easy at night. And even if you are somehow both so financially independent and keep all your shit separate, in the end, whoever has the more money and the more time and the more resources or education on it is going to have a power And you live in California? Good fucking luck. You (laughs) having the more resources and financial stability? That half. Just watch how the court system also treats you. It is so dehumanizing. Oh, oh, by the way, by the way, you haven't yet. I had the unfortunate, uh, you know, experience of not just going to family court for divorce at one point. But you want to see real hell? Go to fucking family court. Spend a day there <laughs> getting divorced. Spend multiple the days drama. there. Spend uh, different weeks there over months and months of a year in family court. You are going to wish you had never been married. So please fucking God, sign a fucking prenup. That is my message of this series. Get a prenup. I love it. (laughs) So August 21st, Scooter Braun stories drop. And we get that from Puck News. Um, I think the guy's name is Matthew Baloney, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Baloney. Baloney. He was the original it's, it's to not, like. Okay. It's not baloney. Okay. No, it baloney. is baloney. Yeah. baloney. I'm trying um, to the pronunciation. <laughs> no, I, I I just realized. Yeah, it's Matthew Baloney. 
I realize it sounds like baloney, like the meat, but it's like B-E-L-L-O-N-I. If there's a different way of pronouncing that, guys, please tell us. So Matthew Baloney reports in Puck at first that people are leaving Scooter Braun's company and then reports that one of the reasons why Ariana Grande is leaving is that she couldn't get Scooter Braun's help. She says that Scooter Braun took a vacation and basically like dipped out on all of his clients. Well, not she, but a source close to the matter. So. Source close. Yeah, I'm <clears throat> saying, I mean, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I personally don't think it was just this. I think that I this think is a good reason. I think that this is PR. I don't think that this is the real reason. I think no. that this is like not a satisfactory explanation in <clears throat> terms of maybe like, a reality. final straw moment. If yeah. You will. Yeah. But people are saying like, you know, oh, look, she's such a diva. So, and I mean, she probably <laughs> fucking is. So if we've learned anything. I love you at the, like, uh, we're like 17,000 hours into, you know what? She probably is a fucking diva. <laughs> no, she is. But that doesn't mean I don't love her. That and being a diva is not a crime. Yeah, it's being a, a crime. diva is not a fucking crime. Okay. So, um, Braun basically declined to make the trip to New York while on vacation in Europe to put out the fires from this scandal breaking. Um, he basically also, we are told throughout various stories that he had like taken a step back from his clients after assuming his new role. And that is also part of it that like he has these codependent relationships with people like Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez and not, sorry, not Selena Gomez with Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande. We know this, we know for a fact that these relationships are codependent. He literally had Justin and his mother living in a townhouse that he was paying for Never in forget. a country <laughs> that they did not have citizenship rights in. And they were completely financially dependent on him for a significant part of Justin's childhood. Okay. And I also, as we sorry, talked about with the Scooter Braun episode, dependent relationships, we talked about the Scooter Braun intermission episode that, which all of you at this point should have very much listened to that Scooter Braun had independent close ties with a, with basically almost all of the tabloids and was able to leverage that relationship to spin specific stories. So yes, not shocking that Ariana and her team are like, please love a God, put your ass into Yes, and also, squabbled. by the way, we know that uh, Scooter also has an inappropriate relationship with child stars that he manages because in a previous episode, if you remember, Ariana has an entire segment in an interview where she's talking about Scooter will just call her up on the phone to like chat yep. like girlfriends We're just friends, and talk yeah. about the boys that they're dating and like, well, the boys she's dating. She's like, yeah, he calls me to talk about my boyfriends and like we're friends and he's yep. like my yep, bestie. Yep, yep. It's like, of course she was like, where are you? That's where it's like, if you are going to be a friend with these clients, you need to be a fucking friend. Yeah. <laughs> and allegedly, he was basically like, I deserve this vacation. Like, I actually, like, I'm very busy. And listen, was li- <laughs> listen, workers' rights, people deserve vacations. But also, <laughs> Scooter Braun is not saying this in a workers' rights, I should be paid fairly. No, of like, I'm not advocating for justice. He's saying this in the. I am Batman from the Dark Knight and I've lived long enough to be a villain in my own story and I'm, you know, reclaiming my rights as a man and, like, as a fucking men's rights activist. But also, like, like, if you are allegedly her friend, wouldn't you also leave your vacation early to help your friend go through something horrible? uh, I mean, just to, like, play the, you know... Matt, game. I literally took over your life for three weeks when I lived with you after my divorce. Like <laughs> exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, and you didn't even have to ask. You were like, just come over, pack a bag, and you can yeah, stay here exactly. until you get on your feet. And exactly. I slept on your couch, and I forced you to watch old continental talent videos with me and we smoked <laughs> i think more weed than has yeah. ever been grown and in the United i think we States. watched drag race philippines in like three days <laughs> <laughs> no it wasn't drag race philippines it was oh that was, was a lot after race that philippines? drag race philippines that was when it first started also um i love that for you or oh is that we what it watched was? like all of yeah. i love that for you yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly okay so as Baloney also, reported, he's rich in enough anyway Puck, to reschedule his uh, Grande's crisis erupted as Braun was posting about jet skiing around Europe and partying <laughs> on Jeff Bezos's yacht. So, like, you're with <laughs> David Geffen, you're in fucking, you're with Jeff Bezos, like, you're partying. I'm sorry. Off with your fucking head. So, Dalton uh, has sources that go to US Magazine or Us Weekly and is like, I'm adjusting to my new normal. And then, dun, dun, dun. This is breaking news as of yesterday. We are so lucky we waited. This Matthew. is why we waited. Legitimately, I am a this paid profit. I knew it. 
I am a fucking prophet. What did I say? I said, come September, These are the fruits we are of going our labor. to get a big update that changes this. Yep. yep. Hit it. Exclusive from Daily Mail UK, where else? Erin Grande and Ethan Slater are living together in New York as he preps for a new Broadway role in Spamalot. As it's revealed, singer and ex Dalton Gomez still haven't filed for divorce. Dun dun dun. Erin is living and married right now while she, sorry, Erin is living with a married man right now while she is still married. A source close to the situation tells DailyMail.com exclusively. It's as if Ariana is holding on to Dalton in case things with Ethan don't work. It's just so strange that she is living with Ethan and has not filed documents to end it with Dalton. Last week, People Magazine reported that the pair were strictly friends until after their split with their respective spouses. But a separate source said those claims were absolutely untrue, adding that there were, quote, receipts to prove it. Ariana and Ethan never intended for the relationship to go public, the second source told Daily Mail. They were hoping to keep it a secret and go back to their marriages as if nothing happened. But this was not possible because they got caught. Now they're stuck together and have really nothing in common with each other. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Sources said that they tried to fix their marriage months ago, but it failed. It was also claimed Dalton had flown to London in January in a last-ditch effort to save the pair's marriage. It was suggested that Ethan and Lily also tried to fix their marriage prior to starting divorce proceedings, but sources later denied this to Daily Mail. Quote, They did not work out because Ariana and Ethan kept their affair going, despite that, a source said at the time. In the wake, in the wake of Ethan's uh, filing divorce, Lily spoke exclusively to DailyMail.com, revealing that she was attempting to move past her heartbreak and instead focus on raising her son as a single mother. She said, "Quote: I am focused on rebuilding a life for our son. This is what I am trying to do, and this is my sole focus." Ethan and Ariana have, of course, gone off radar following the news that they were dating, but their pair returned to social media last week, with Ethan scrubbing all traces of Lily from his Instagram. He originally had gone private on Instagram, by the way, and then went public again, or reopened his account. He simply posted a video um, from Spamalot Rehearsals in New York City, which debuts again um, at the end of October 31st. Uh, Ariana, who has been posting about her new line of makeup, liked Ethan Slater's rehearsal post. Girl, Ooh, girl, girl, the girl. whirlwind of it all. I'm the. I'm sorry. The source that says because they were caught, they now are stuck together and don't have really anything in common has me like <laughs> floor. <laughs> Not that like I, I didn't see that coming, but ooh. ooh. I mean, listen. Like I said, what did we find out about fucking Pete Davidson? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we rushed into this and I actually don't like you. <laughs> it's almost oh, like we, we got caught the, up in the it, thrill What of it did all. we say? What did you... Wait, actually, Matthew, you know what? I'm not doing this. I'm going to actually read exactly word for please, word please. what she said. <laughs> I just... I cannot believe it. Um, also, I am going to read... Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I just we, can't get over that they said they were going to keep it a secret and go back to their marriages if nothing happened. I'm like... Um, I don't believe that. I'm Quote, like, my friends luck. were like, and she's speaking here in Vogue. Yes, she's speaking in so, Vogue. Yeah. This is an Ariana Grande on Grief and Growing Up uh, in, from July uh, 9th, 2019. <laughs> my friends were like, Come, we're going to have a fun summer in NYC. And then I met Pete and it was an amazing distraction. It was frivolous and fun and insane and highly unrealistic. And I loved him and I didn't know him. I'm like an infant when it comes to real life in this old soul, been around the block a million times artist. I still don't trust myself with this life stuff. So I actually fully believe the idea that like she's suddenly like, uh, wait. <laughs> 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 Let's pump the brakes. She's like, oh, shit. Look. what are we gonna do now? <laughs> oh, but like living together, like for what at this point? Is it because he like can't go home? <laughs> <laughs> She's like staying in one of my like seventeen bedrooms in this penthouse. I'm sure. You said, is it because? We can't go home. <laughs> I fucking hate. I mean, you. if I was legit, I'd also get the locks changed. Honestly, you can find your way back. <laughs> get your own apartment. Hit the bricks. Hit the bricks. 
<laughs> with that, you guys, I want to ask you now of this series, if you can remember, what is now the funniest thing that you can say about Ariana Grande <laughs> and or this series? Like, what is the one thing ooh, that you're going to like take ooh, away from it? Ooh, ooh, that's hard. That's very difficult. I mean, what is your I, rose and thorn of this experience? I hate to Andy say Cohen that. One of my, I think one of my favorite moments, possibly speaking of like the Titan submersible, um, was our Patreon episode of Diva Moments, where we covered the dad, the blogger, who was so upset with his daughter's experience to come meet and greet with Ariana Grande that he wrote a like 3,000 word essay on it that actually basically sparked like most of the dramas and rumors that have played yeah. her since. Um, that was definitely a great moment. That was hilarious. Um, also do have to laugh at um, basically the entire Thank You Next era, even though it was like tragic and dark. I do think that was like the most illuminating to look back in yeah. hindsight just before 2020. Definitely. I um want to also say that before we go, I want to play a video that Burp. you might not be expecting. I'm not. Um, because I... Oh, you have no idea what we're going to do, are you? <laughs> I'm so excited about this because I've kept this to the very end. Um, this is my rose and thorn of this experience. <laughs> and I uh, just felt very vindicated by this video. And also it made me cry. Um, Ariana Grande did a beauty tutorial for Vogue because she came out with the new mm -hmm. REM Foundation, the Sweetener Foundation. And in that video, she discusses almost word for word what we had said last week and the week before about the way that her identity changes because of beauty and the perception of herself to the public and the perception of critics to her music and just the general vibe of being a pop star affecting her sense of identity um, she basically like word for word reiterates what we had said. And I oh, felt Oh, this video. Not I did, like a, I, yeah. affirmed wasn't the right word there. I think it's like I related to her, and I will say kind of what I left this video thinking um after we listened to it. So it's about a minute long. Full transparency as a beauty person, as I do my lips. I've had a ton of lip filler over the years and Botox, I stopped in 2018 because I just felt so too much. I just felt like hiding, you know? Didn't expect to get emotional. <laughs> Take 300. No, um, for a long time, beauty was about hiding for me. And now I feel like maybe it's not since I stopped getting fillers and Botox and maybe I'll start again one day. I don't know. To each their own. Whatever makes you feel beautiful, I do support. I know for me, I was just like, oh, I want to see my well-earned cry lines and smile lines. I hope my smile lines get deeper and deeper and I laugh more and more. And I just think aging is like such a, it can be such a beautiful thing. Now, might I get a facelift in, a, in 10 years? Might. Yeah, <laughs> but these are just thoughts that I feel like we should be able to discuss if we're sitting here talking about beauty secrets. Fuck it. Let's lay it all out there. Wow. <laughs> can you make a note, by the way, right now? Yeah. Can you cut out the ending conversation of like, this was such a good series and this is what we're going to be doing? Can you cut all of that out? And can you start from the what was like the highlight of this experience for you? And um, yes, yeah, like one from one. the end of the last article, like when we stopped talking about the last article, can you then cut to me asking you like of this series, what yeah. was the highlight for you? Mm -hmm. Because I want this to come before the ending stuff. Does that make sense? Uh, okay. Do you want me to sorry. move that stuff to the end or do you want to like? No, I'll just redo that. it. Okay. Did you make that note? Mm hmm. Okay, cool. You're good. I think that this was like <sighs> sad and poignant and real. And it really highlighted what I have left this series with thinking about Ariana Grande is that like she is a person who, for better or worse, puts her entire heart into everything that she does. Yeah. And cannot help but be 
vulnerable and just completely transparent with her emotions and her music. And I actually really respect her more almost because like artists that I love and respect, like Beyonce and Mariah Carey, who say so much through their music, I feel like Ariana gets overlooked at times, not overlooked in comparison to Beyonce by any means. That's not what I'm saying, but more like by the wider public for being a producer, for being a songwriter. I think she's though. Yeah. I think that's definitely what it for is. For being a producer, for being a songwriter, and for being somebody who genuinely says everything she wants to say in the music, for better or worse, right? Like, she owns writing a song like Get Well Soon, as well as a song like Break Up With Your Boyfriend, I'm Bored. Like, those are two songs that came from her, and she both is like, these are both me. Both of these yeah. songs are me. Fl- like flaws and all warts and all. And I, I'm compelled by that, even if I'm not necessarily always in agreement with her choices. And I don't always necessarily think her choices are correct. Um, but I also think I have a newfound, like Justin, almost like a sadness for her too, because an extended empathy, an extended empathy because like her commentary on like, getting older it's like she was about to say getting older is a gift you know she says getting older is a beautiful thing but you can hear her like it's like that's where her mind was going she's thinking of probably mac and she's thinking of mac she's She's seen lost their lives the people that have lost their lives at her concert or mac all these people that she has been confronted with who don't have the gift of getting older and being like for so long, I used makeup to change who I was. I used my beauty to change who I was. I love getting into costume, but it was also a way for me to hide and like obscure myself. And I really think that that's what we left the thank you next era with was like, this is yeah, not Ariana, which is why I think it's her weakest and most divisive era, like very obvious flaws to the like more like subtle nuances of it. I think that it was not really her. I think it was like an expression of something that was almost like self-harm for her, you know, where it was like, I, yeah, she honestly. was like indulging something that really should have been worked through with a therapist. It was kind of like self-exploitative in that way. Like yeah, taking where, advantage of a really dark time in her life and trying yeah, to turn something out of it. It was like me, like fresh out of my divorce. And obviously I didn't get a spray tan and like develop a black <laughs> scent overnight. That's not what I'm saying. But like, It was Mm -hmm. like after I got my divorce, like that week, you were like, I know you want to record. I know you're angry. I know you're passionate about this topic that we're going to discuss. But like, you cannot be in the studio this week. Like, this is bad for you. Like, your desire to work and push through this is is actually self-harm. Like, Matt said that to me behind the scenes. Y'all don't know this because like, obviously, we try and (laughs) play play (laughs) professional as best we can. But like, Matt was in that moment like, don't do this, Joan. Like, I know you want to, I know you want to just like put your head down and get through it. But like, this is not good for you to do this. Like your desire to do that is actually something that you shouldn't indulge. It's a way to distract yourself. And that's why I do have more sympathy for like Justin or like Ariana after we've done this research, because I know they're not in a position where the people around them are thinking of them in the best way. It's not to say even, albeit maybe Scooter Braun would be exception to this. It's not to say the people around her are like, how can we take advantage of her? How can we milk everything out of her? I don't think that's the case, Mm -hmm. but these people can't be there for her like a regular friend because she is, this global superstar and there are contracts that be fulfilled yeah and there's a whole industry about is around her like vultures waiting for something to happen and i can see that thank you next era specifically after all this work that we've done really being that dark point and i do see especially now like we just saw in that video i think the next five ten years for her are going to be so different and are going to be very yeah. very very interesting the way I, she's I, I handled think she's the learned a lot stuff, she's yeah. learned a lot the way she's handled the ethan stuff proves without a doubt that she is like changed the way that she is is changing not saying the way that it transpired behind the scenes i'm saying the way that she has reacted to it in public shows a level of growth that we can say for a fact is happening as people who have now spent two three months reading (laughs) literally everything she's ever said like i was gonna literally say literally everything she's ever every said headline about. since 2009 to now at this point yes. we have come some through. even prior to that if you were to exactly. take your time in florida at the <laughs> hockey game uh, the, her breakout on the zamboni all the way her back in Baton, the honey. <laughs> 13 the musical um well guys 
thank you so much for listening to this yeah, series. Wow, it has truly. been such a wild moment for Matt and I to see the growth that has happened for our podcast through it as either researchers and writers and hosts to just like seeing how many more people we have listening week to week. It's super exciting and a huge, huge bonus on something that really we would have done regardless of if anyone listened to it or not. (laughs) Um, And I just want to give a shout out to Matt who... um, I give you so many shout outs, but it's worth it because like I couldn't do this podcast without you. And every day we get into this studio, I feel like is such a gift and just so much fun. And it is like, can't tell you guys enough how much fun it is to do something you love with your best fucking friend in the whole world. And no, I truly. have so much fun doing this and I love you very much. Oh, thank you so much. I love you too. And thank I you next feel, <laughs> and I feel exactly the same. I mean, the work that you have done on this is like, cannot be like diminished at all like it is just absolutely astounding like you're really like it i am here to watch you be like amazing and i'm sorry i can like support you and make you feel like, <laughs> you say as i have like <laughs> pit stains down to well they can't see the video crack, honey because <laughs> of this 90 degree weather <laughs> listen oh i mean we're I both just wiping it, the sweat out of my asshole and you're like you're beautiful you're gorgeous you're talented you're you Linda, like Linda 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 you're a model no i mean we've shared a lot of swamp ass together let's just say that like, yeah we're we've this podcast. <laughs> we're we're gonna do our very first live show which by the way guys we are planning so get stay Sometime tuned early next year honey um we are gonna be at our first live show and we might have to just do it in the winter when we have no (sighs) danger of legitimately see like let the let the cold (laughs) frigid breeze in when i went and saw sup live um i was like telling carrie like oh my god i would be so scared of doing a show in this heat because like i would be sweating (laughs) i literally keep thinking of like trixie and katya and they talk about like doing drag and they're like if the ac isn't set to like 55 degrees blowing at your face at 60 miles per hour like i will die on stage and that is exactly how we feel <laughs> oh my god mm. what a journey we have been on and it's just i'm just quaking at the miley cyrus wrecking ball <laughs> Con- like that this um, I, I can't, can't think of it now it's too much wait. to think about but i can't, I can't wait. wait to air out some truly truly Ooh. controversial opinions about bangers <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you went to the Bangers tour. You I went to the Bangers the tour ground. for work, actually. Um, yeah, you wrote enough, about it. Oh it was God. the very first professional gig I ever got. Was my friend was friends with this person who ran a local college paper where I was living at the time, and like a I don't I can't remember if it was community college or the actual college because the paper you know they like it was in the actual paper. It wasn't in the like digital archive or whatever. And they had gotten tickets to see the bangers tour um, through this paper and were like, I can't go. Like, do you know any writers or journalism students that would want to do it? And I wasn't a journalism student, but I was a writer. And I was like, I'll go write about it. And I did. And it was the wildest experience of my life. I mean, I to can't this day. Imagine. Sky I would Ferreira pay the time travel. Sky for Ferreira that. opened. Wow. And <laughs> knew none of the words to her songs. Not a single word. She shuffled around on stage in crutches. In crutches. Why was she... Wait, crutches? Remember? Because she had fallen off stage and broken her leg. Oh my God. It was right after that. Oh my let me, God. Wait, let me make sure that I'm not like totally misremembering that. That's like implanted memories. <laughs> Breaks leg bangers tour. Yeah, Sky Ferreira injured during Bangers Tour gets 60 stitches. Okay, so while performing Jesus in Anaheim, Christ. yeah, it was literally this the tour before mine. Yeah, Anaheim and then San Jose. In California, yeah. um, Sky Ferreira fell during the first song on stage. According to Ferreira's Instagram, she spent seven hours in the hospital and ended up with 60 stitches in her lower right leg. Okay, so she didn't break her leg, but she... Um, she, was in, she was in stitches. Bangers so Tour. Like, let me actually see when... You, you gotta when stop. You know, you're, you're, already, of, you're already starting your research. No, I'm like, I'm... <laughs> so curious what the dates were okay wait did you record so, anything from that do you have like any like no i have not on your phone or matt like no literally it was okay so that anaheim show was three shows before the one i saw her in the wild wow. wild wow. wow like i guess fifteen thousand people were in attendance that's so crazy it was such a big tour it was in a hockey studio a hockey studio <laughs> we're getting off track I love you guys. Thank yes. you for listening to this podcast. Truly. Please, God, tell all your friends. We didn't end up watching the um, 
which we call it the documentary me, because it turned out it's to be not really nothing. Really a documentary. <laughs> yeah, we did a hot Stupidage. topics episode that was really good instead. So go listen to the hot topics episode. Share this with all your friends. Go back and listen to pop music that fucks. Go back and listen to child star hell. Go back and listen to our series on the Magnolia Network. We've got so much good shit for you guys in the archives. We'll be back next week with Sophie Turner, Joe Jonas. This is the podcast recording live from the absolute edge of the internet for the very last time in We Forgive You, Ariana Grande. (laughs) I am resuming my duties as local gossip, Joan Summers, and you are... The local artist, Matthew Lawson. And we love you guys. Thank you for listening. Three, two, Two, one. one. Goodbye. Thirty for thirty-five. It means I want a sixty-nine with you, because the light is coming to take back everything the darkness. <laughs> You've been listening to Eating for Free, which is written and hosted by myself, Joan Summers, and Matthew Lawson, and produced by Ashlyn Thomas and myself, with music from our friend Pluto. For more information about this episode and our show, go to eatingforfree.com. And if you want weekly bonus episodes, go to patreon.com backslash eatingforfree, which helps support this show and keep it going. We've also got merch at eatingforfree.com backslash merch. 